A British delegation led by the country's defence minister has met with President Zelensky in Kiev, who has praised the UK for supporting Ukraine with arms supplies and anti-Russian sanctions. Let's now discuss London's role in the conflict with Russia's ambassador to the UK, Andrei Kalin. Many thanks for joining us on the programme. We know how busy you are. I'd like to ask you about Foreign Secretary, Secretary Liz Truss, who's called the death sentence for of two British mercenaries in Donetsk, a quote, sham judgment with absolutely no legitimacy. What's your reaction to that statement? Uh, well, uh, it is a very controversial statement uh, because uh, they are under, they have been, uh, uh, was a discussion is going on about that, but actually it is uh, the court uh, of uh, Donetsk Republic, uh, Lugansk Republic, and they are under the, the jurisdiction and they are now just against laws that are existing here. So it is just, well, of course, it's irresponsible to put illegitimate. And what's your assessment of Britain's support for Ukraine in this conflict so far? Uh, British uh, is putting the conflict uh, very seriously, I will say. <laughs> uh, it prolongates the conflict. It makes uh, Ukrainian soldiers uh, continue to fight. Uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, very cynical, uh, I should say, uh, because uh, Britain is providing money, not much, but it is uh, it is providing weapon, and it enforces and encourages uh, Ukrainian army to continue fighting. Uh, and no single knowledge uh, about or a single idea about the future of Ukraine. What's going to happen after that? Uh, what's going to happen to Ukraine after that? What kind of state it will be? So uh, I have never seen any statement on that, neither official or conclusions or ideas what will be the future. Hmm. Well, Zelensky has called Boris Johnson, of course, a true friend of Ukraine because the UK was one of the first countries to send aid after the war erupted. How long do you expect the UK to stand with Ukraine if there's no swift resolution of the conflict, despite an abundance of arms supplies to Kiev? It's an interesting question uh, whether uh, UK will be interested after the conflict in rebuilding Ukraine, in continuing pouring money uh, to the authorities uh, in Kiev, uh, that proved to be very inefficient in uh, in uh, building up the country and handling uh, country's economy uh, once again in uh, doing something constructive. So I, I'm afraid uh, the interest will be lost uh, um, in uh, some some sort of it if uh, there will be a failure uh, to continue to make such a a project as uh, an anti-Russian uh, to construct out of Ukraine, an anti-Russian state, uh, and it will be no more capabilities uh, and no more possibility to do that, uh, then well, probably uh, it will be lesser interest than now. Um, and what are the UK's interests? What sort of interests do you think the UK has in sending so much money, spending so much money on supporting Kiev and in supplying Ukraine with so many weapons? Well, yeah, uh, it is, it is one-sided uh, approach, I, I will say. So there are different qualifications of what is going on right now uh, in Ukraine. Uh, some are saying that it is a kind of conflict between East and West, uh, between Russia and West. Uh, I think it is, uh, it is too much. Uh, it's a certainly an exaggeration because um, uh, the activities are concentrated in one place. So right now it is in Donbass and a bit wider. So uh, the best definition, uh, what I have heard uh, in, to my mind, it, this is the end of the civil war, probably, that has uh, started in uh, the year 2014, 2015, uh, after uh, 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 the powers in Kyiv has been illegally seized. And uh, UK continues uh, to, uh, to make uh, with, with its powers uh, 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 an adversary state uh, to Russia, uh, which is, of course, contrary uh, to our uh, interests, to our situation. And this is one of the main reasons that a conflict has broken uh, out and uh, involved, we have been involved in a limited operation over here. And do you think that so much foreign aid is a rational move, given that the UK itself is now suffering from economic inflation? Uh, right. Uh, it, uh, it is now recognized, I do believe, also in the United Kingdom uh, by some experts and also uh, higher uh, in the government that uh, the sanctions that has been introduced uh, against uh, Russia in, uh, in the context of, of uh, 
our involvement you know, over there. And now uh, they are returning back. They are fighting back uh, into England. And uh, what is the result is that uh, uh, a bit about a month ago, uh, the situation, economical situation in Britain was uh, one of the worst in a J7. Uh, it, was, it has taken last place. And, uh, the, and uh, uh, recently, there was a constatation by the organization of recent economic development that the uh, development of ec economics in Britain is a war among uh, 20 most developed countries. So now this is the result, of course. And the British government has, of course, blamed its domestic price inflation on the Ukraine conflict. Do you think that's uh, justified, though, or do you think the government has done enough to help regular people cope with the soaring cost of living? Uh, I don't think, think so. Uh, it is now yesterday for the first time uh, British Parliament heard uh, statements uh, by its Prime Minister about economics, about economy and what should be, uh, what should be done. Uh, but uh, as I have read this statement, it was quite weak. Uh, it did not uh, suggest uh, well, uh, things that should be really done. Uh, and uh, I, I think that the uh, government uh, in the recent months simply disregarded uh, uh, developments in uh, poor developments, domestic economy, and necessary measures has not been taken, in fact. And right now, perhaps it is uh, too late, uh, because predictions are that uh, the, the growth of domestic of the, uh, of the product will be this year only three uh, plus something. Percent, and next year, it will be stagnation, it will be zero growth. And as, of course, we've seen Ukrainian people flee their homeland, many residents in the UK have offered to host Ukrainian refugees. Uh, what do you think that means for the country? No, uh, it is it's a humanitarian issue. Uh, I, uh, as far as I understand, it is by now about 60,000 of refugees uh, has uh, now settled in the United Kingdom. Uh, uh, I have seen it myself in some families, uh, and uh, they are welcome in the families. Uh, uh, but uh, what will be next? What will be by winter? Whether they will find mm -hmm. uh, work uh, to keep it themselves or they will have to leave the country? That's a big question. Yeah. Uh, the UK and other Western countries, of course, have been supplying weapons to Kiev under the guise that they will be used to somehow resolve the conflict. Uh, do you think that rhetoric is truthful? What we see uh, exactly is that uh, some of this uh, weapon uh, that has been supplied to Kiev uh, has been used uh, against uh, civil population in Donetsk, in, in, in Lugansk. Uh, we have seen already the results of shelling by uh, French uh, artillery, uh, of the destruction of houses and kill of civilians. Uh, only uh, last week, I think it's about 80 civilians uh, has died because of this shelling. And the more weapon that has been chosen for that, uh, that's uh, exactly was uh, this artillery that has been supplied over the year. I do not even mention that it is in contradiction with the basic principle of uh, non-supplying of arms uh, into uh, the zone of conflicts. This unresponsible behavior, this is one of the principles which is guided, European Union is guided uh, by uh, never supply weapons to, to, uh, to, to the zones of conflict. And uh, as you understand, it is uh, used not only in, for the military purposes, but it is used for destruction of civilian houses and uh, making victims among uh, civil population. Do you think it's fair to say the UK has now abandoned diplomacy when it comes to the conflict in Ukraine? And do you think that a military solution to the conflict is a legitimate option? Uh, uh, I would like to remind you that in the very beginning of uh, the military operation, uh, of the operation uh, over there, uh, there was a certain pause uh, because uh, we heard that Kyiv is probably going to negotiate. And President Putin has ordered a pause into in uh, the advancement. Uh, but Ukrainians did not post. They continued uh, to they use this post for a grouping of forces, and uh, it appeared that they, they are not serious about the about, uh, negotiation process. But anyway, uh, I, uh, my understanding is that uh, further fighting, uh, yeah, Ukrainians would like to fight, and they are now fighting. At one point, they also say that the result uh, of uh, the whole uh, there will be on the battlefield. Right now, they are losing, clearly, uh, the situation in Donbass. Uh, and uh, 
the more they will fight, the more they will lose. The weaker positions of, of uh, Kyiv will be uh, by, by the end of the story, of course. Uh, and we will see what's going to happen next week. Uh, some people say that the Ukraine conflict has been brought on by Western powers meddling in the region. Uh, is that something that you would agree with? And with so many arms supplies and foreign fighters, of course, going to Ukraine, including from the UK, is it possible to say that this is a conflict between Russia and the West? Uh, I, I try to answer this question. I don't believe that it's a conflict between Russia and the West. Of course, uh, we have seen uh, that Western powers has, uh, were preparing Ukraine uh, for, uh, for the conflict uh, by applying arms for, uh, during uh, many years before the conflict. Uh, United Kingdom has specifically uh, uh, maintained Operation Orbit uh, to prepare uh, military, uh, military uh, people from Ukraine uh, for this conflict as well. And, uh, as, and also, uh, UK has started to construct two naval bases uh, on the coast, uh, one in Berdyansk and the other in Nikolaev. Of course, we have seen all these preparations that has been done uh, to en encourage Ukraine for a conflict. So in a uh, in certain way, it is uh, that they have meddled into it. Uh, and of course, we, at the moment, uh, I think that they are preventing uh, any kind of moves that been born inside Kyiv for negotiation. So far, they, will, they are continuing uh, to, uh, to push Ukraine in, in this, um, uh, in the, or along the same way uh, to continue fighting, not to think about the future, as I have said. Uh, relations between the UK and Russia have probably never been worse. Do you think it's possible to improve relations between the two sides in the near future? And if so, what steps should these two countries take? Well, you know that uh, given the statements, uh, also insulting statements that we hear from uh, uh, British representatives in uh, international organizations, uh, I don't believe that it will come uh, soon, at least in the foreseeable future. Uh, we also took note uh, of uh, the statement by the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson uh, that he do not envisage uh, any improvement in relationship. Of course, we uh, take into account uh, all this statement, and uh, this is where we stand now. Do you think the Ukraine conflict has strengthened relations between Western powers, such as the UK and the US, as some media reports have said? <clears throat> In certain uh, way, yes. It is uh, in a position against Russia, but they were uh, uh, strong enough uh, earlier than that. But in terms of uh, other things which are more probably more important for UK uh, in trade uh, and economics, uh, still the uh, United States, for instance, is refusing to, to uh, try an, a, 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 an agreement uh, of, of, about trade, uh, which facilitates trade with UK, which is now better of UK as well. I do not see any improvement uh, on that side. So uh, still there are lots of diversions. So, in your opinion, how will this conflict be resolved? Do you think negotiations between the countries will be able to uh, come to some kind of peace deal? Sooner or later, of course. Uh, and uh, there are predictions uh, by some institutions. Uh, there are elements uh, that are already on the surface uh, that can. But uh, as uh, I have said, and I would like to repeat it, the longer conflict will last, the weaker situation in Ukraine will be. So more, concess more concessions Ukraine should do uh, if uh, it will prolong it for uh, more months as ahead. And, and what could be done differently right now to resolve the conflict? Ukraine should realize its position, uh, number one, uh, this is first. Second, of course, uh, uh, push from uh, the uh, Western countries, especially from UK and the US, pushing Ukraine for, to uh, continue the war should stop. And uh, everybody should realize uh, where they stand and to think about the future, to think about the future construction uh, of European security as well, uh, in which Ukraine uh, should uh, find its proper place. Uh, of I don't believe it will be you know, European Union membership because it is very far from reality. And of course, we will. We are not going to speak about NATO membership because one of the reasons was uh, the uh, possible membership Ukraine uh, in NATO. So this is out of question. Uh, and other uh, things which are pretty uh, realistic that uh, uh, Donetsk uh, and uh, Lugansk do not want uh, any uh, involvement, any uh, to be part of Ukraine uh, because of oppression. 
personal language. Ukraine should uh, uh, understand that uh, it is uh, by, uh, it's, it's a state that where uh, Russian and Ukrainian language has has a role, like all other European states, for instance, Belgium. So uh, it should be equality in languages, and uh, there should be no discrimination for the Russians or Russians in population over there. And should the negotiations between Russia and Ukraine be resumed? Uh, well, uh, we will see uh, if it will be serious on the part of Ukraine, because until now, uh, the leadership of Ukraine is changing its position every other hour. So we cannot uh, understand uh, whether they have a position for negotiations or it is just... Russia's ambassador to the UK, Andrei Kalin, many thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, too.